This is a story of a little submarine, the man who built it, and the pursuit of American dreams. I met a couple guys a little while ago that built this beautiful little mini submarine. I was talking with them and asked, do you think we could take you guys, your submarine, and go back to the factory where you rolled the hull many years ago and recreate the scene of creating the submarine? They said yes, and after about a year of planning and logistics, because the submarine was up in Alaska and the factory's busy, we wound up doing just that. Here's a shot of the inside of the submarine. Believe me when I say it's a tight fit. What I'm trying to do is recreate the scene somewhat whimsically. It's not a literal interpretation of back then. It's more, I would say, fanciful. This is the final composition of the submarine in the same foundry. You can see we have pipes floating up in the air. There's air tanks and battery packs, electric motors, even a bucket of paint on the ground. I'm using a technique called painting with light. Over, say, for example, a 10 second exposure, I'll take a big large flashlight and paint with light certain sections of the submarine. Over the course of many, many hours, I'll wind up doing literally hundreds and hundreds of these different exposures. Later on in Photoshop, I'll wind up taking some of those photographs and layering them back together to create what looks like a beautifully intricate, detailed, precise photograph of a very rich scene. I'll also light sometimes very dramatically. It's not an exact literal interpretation. It is indeed a poetic interpretation of something that sort of happened 26 years ago. In this case, you can see lighting on the bottom and behind the submarine. I'm also painting with light the entire environment that we're looking at. It's not so much, I would say, a snapshot or even a fully rich, detailed version of the scene. It's more, I would say, a portrait of the environment and the submarine that belongs in it. If you look, you can see I'm even lighting that pipe floating in the air from underneath to create yet more drama and interest. The gentleman on the right, Armando, he's the foreman for the factory. And interestingly, it was his uncle who was the foreman 26 years ago and helped roll the hull. This gentleman on the left, Chris, he's the uh, pilot for the submarine and actually runs the small business of chartering the submarine out to scientists. I do separate exposures, of course, for the sparks flying up and down. Interestingly, the submarine can go down 1,200 feet underwater and stay down three days in an emergency. Lastly, Douglas, the designer and builder of the submarine, I put him in the center hatch. Of course, none of these guys would be doing all these things at the same time, but I think it's such a charming, interesting interpretation of what did happen. Douglas holding a blue flame creates a little blue flame on the back wall, which is such a cool look. If you see and you look carefully, you can see this final photograph compared to this photograph is basically the same composition exactly, except for that it was photographed at night and I added three guys. It's the exact same environment and composition. The only difference is lighting between this and this, and I think that's so interesting. When I zoom into the close-ups, just to help see the detail, I'm using, in this case, a Canon EOS 1 DS Mark II for the photograph. You can see the light bouncing off Douglas's eyeballs, just to give you a sense of the detail built in the photographs. I'm also using Photoshop to color correct and put photographs into layers, and I'm also using Aperture to help manage the large files and large numbers of files. Sometimes it's tricky to find an appropriate composition for these people to go into the shot so they don't look too static. Even looking at the dials on the gauges, it's kind of neat to see these are indeed photographs. I like to think of them as hyper-photographic. And lastly, as a point of charm and interest, I like to include a little hook or trick. In this case, I included the Beatles yellow submarine plastic model and put it into the environment very subtly. And that's how the photograph came about.